Hey everyone and welcome to Rose Tank Gaming. Today we're going to do something a little different. Inside this box I have a brand new Sega Saturn. Brand new to me anyway. This video is going to be a bit more informative with a little bit of a science experiment at the end. So enough bullshit, let's get to it. As the successor to the Sega Genesis, the Sega Saturn had a rough start. Launch of the console was initially planned for September of 95, the same time as Sony's PlayStation. But Sega of Japan pressured Sega of America CEO Tom Kalinske to push it forward to get ahead of the competition. Infamously, at E3 in May of 95, Sega announced that due to high demand, consoles were on sale right then and there for $3.99 at select chains. One of Sony's landmark moments in gaming history was following up the surprise announcement of the Saturn. Sony Computer Entertainment America President Steve Race took the stage, said $299, and walked away to thunderous applause. I'm going to ask Sony Computer Entertainment Presidents of America, Steve Race, to join me for a brief presentation. If you're thinking right now, this doesn't look like the Saturn I had as a kid. You're right. This is actually a Japanese Sega Saturn. Both North America and Japan share a region NTSC, however the games are typically locked to that country's console. Only Japanese Saturn games play on this console. This actually isn't a bad thing though. The Sega Saturn is considered a commercial failure here in the States, but it seemed to thrive across the Pacific Ocean and Bizarro Land. Japan kept a lot of good titles for the system to themselves, leaving the library to be desired in other regions. That is where this device comes in, the Action Replay. This little cartridge does a lot for the system, allowing you to use cheat codes, acting as additional memory for the system, but most importantly allowing the use of other regions' games on the system. This cartridge is not rare in the slightest, I think I picked up mine for about $25 on Amazon, and works on any region's Saturn out there. If you have a North American Saturn and want to play Japanese games, or vice versa like what I have here, this thing does it for you. This is a must own for anyone that wants to get into the system. One of the things you might also be noticing is the severe yellowing of the originally white plastic. My lighting isn't great, you can see it a little bit better here with use of this flashlight. The disc cover is more white and the outer plastic seems to be yellowing a lot faster. This is more commonly known to happen to Super Nintendos as they aged and is falsely attributed to cigarette smoke. What's actually happening is, over time as UV rays from the sun hit the console, the bromine in the plastic that makes the console flame retardant chemically reacts with the oxygen in the air and turns it this ugly brown color. It can be reversed however, so I'm going to tear out the guts of this Saturn and do a little science to make it look like new again. I'll need the sun for science though, and it's getting to be dark, so that will have to wait until tomorrow. Just a quick note, if you don't feel comfortable with electronics and are afraid of damaging your console, you might not want to tear it apart like I am here. I severely underestimated the number of screws holding this board in place, and it all has to come out for the science to take place, because we're going to be submerging this in a solution of peroxide and water. Okay, it's tomorrow now. When peroxide, rather than oxygen, is met with UV light on the plastic, it restarts the chemical reaction of the bromine, reversing the oxidation and should turn it back to its original white color. There are many ways to do this suggested online, but today I'll be using this 40 volume cream peroxide developer. I bought this at a local beauty supply store for $5, but I've since found this exact bottle for $3. And just a quick warning, this is a hazardous material. This cream contains 12% peroxide, where normal medical peroxide is about 3%. The warning on the back suggests proper skin, eye, and mouth safety. It also says for professional use only. And as a professional fuck up, I feel totally capable of using it effectively. What I'm going to do is place all the plastic pieces that need to be deoxidized in a clear tub, fill it with just enough water to cover the pieces, dump the peroxide in, mix it up, cover it with saran wrap, and leave it out in the sun for a few hours. While we wait for that to cook, let's do a mail check. Looks like more cables have arrived. What is cool about all of Sega's consoles is that even though we are used to using the old composite cables, yellow, white, and red, 
They support out-of-the-box RGB through a SCART cable without modification. SCART is a Japan and European format that never cut on in America, but RGB is one of the highest quality video outputs that exists. We use SCART to carry RGB from the old consoles to our upscaler and finally to the TV to be upscaled to 1080p. The footage you've been watching is a recording of our Sega Genesis and RGB. I'd also like to take this time to point out how different the advertisements were for this console for the two different regions. This might be one of the reasons why the console failed here in the States. Introducing Sega Saturn. Aww. Hit it. Sega Saturn. It's how you play the game. <laughs> Okay, Okay, so it's been about two hours. Let's go take a look at the shells and see how they are coming along. Without removing them from the tubs, I can already see a noticeable difference. The key is to get direct sunlight on the most yellow parts to have the best effect. We'll remove these and spray the peroxide off with a garden hose, and once it's dry we can put it all back together. Here's a before and after shot of all of the pieces. The lighting is a little bit different because it's a different time of day, but even still there is a significant difference in color. I left this back panel in the house when doing the whitening, so it gives a direct side-by-side -side comparison to the change in color with the peroxide. Now with it looking fresh out of the box and all back together, it's time to test it out. Here's a fan favorite, Panzer Dragoon in RGB playing on the Saturn to show you how the system handles 3D. And for 2D, this is chatting Parodius on the Sega Saturn. For having to compete with the PS1 and later the N64, this console did awful, but it's still a neat little piece of history with some really good exclusive games for it. Sega would go on to make the Dreamcast before quitting hardware altogether. And fans often blame the Saturn for Sega's downfall in the hardware market because consumers had just lost confidence in Sega. To end us off, I'll quote some random guy on the internet. The Saturn will go down in history as one of the most troubled and greatest systems of all time. I know today's video was a little bit different, but I hope you liked it and I hope to be able to make more of these in the future. I want to call out our friends Caleb Harrington on Twitch and Palcork on YouTube to make a video of one of their favorite consoles. 